Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, and welcome to another episode of Analysis, Avatar The Last Airbender. I am Callum, this is Matt. Hello. And this is Evan. It only took four years and two seasons, but I'm finally participating in an Avatar review. <laughs> and rest assured, rest assured <laughs> really I will do my best long. to bring this series to an all-time low. <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> Matt, summarize this episode lightly for us, please. Uh, this is Avatar book or Avatar Last Airbender book three episode one entitled The Awakening. Uh, so this is the first episode after uh, the amazing crossroads, crossroads of, destiny. of destiny. Yes, the Empire Strikes Back of Avatar with that ending with Oh no, <laughs> everything has gone to hell in a handbasket. What do we do now? And um, this is reestablishing our characters. A few weeks later, Aang wakes up. Uh, Zuko's gone home, and uh, we we pick up the journey from there. So, uh, Evan, uh, why don't you take us into our first talking point today? Well, it's well, like you said, it's very much a you know licking the wounds episode. Them sort of recovering from just the disaster that happened previously. Aang wakes up with a new head of hair and a new scar on his back in a Fire Nation ship, and needless to say, he's initially kind of put off by this because, like you said, he's been out for so long. He doesn't know what's going on. He thought he'd be captured. But thankfully, once he wakes up, he goes to the deck and he finds his friends who filled them in on what happened. Yeah. It's, the, it's very much like scene, that, that dream sequence like situation yeah. for him. He's like, he's like, what? Like, I've been here before yeah. from first episode of book one, but also It does. What? Yeah, it is like that. They <laughs> yeah. really... The least well, this episode is like, like, I don't want to say it's like dull, but it's like, it's formulaic in the sense where it's like, it's very intentionally just kind of trying to hit the reset button and reestablish what's going yes. on. And just kind yeah. of, it, it's definitely one of those like taking a breath episodes, which is you would expect from like a third season of a series like this. It's mm -hmm. also got to establish um, the kind of time skip from the mm -hmm. end of the book, th uh, book two and the start of this one and, and kind of catching up anybody who either hasn't seen the previous mm -hmm. ones or it's just been a while for because obviously the time gap when yeah. it was released on TV was a real thing. So, And I think it does a relatively good job of that. You know, the scene yeah. it shows and the, and the flashbacks, etc. It, it's pretty succinct. Yeah, I mean, great. it is pretty quick in, in, in that they tell you what happened, like what happened to the Earth King, what happened with their with Sokka and Guitar's father, all that jazz. But it doesn't feel like it's I mean, even though it is relatively quick and it never really, at least not to me, it didn't feel like it was like rushed to the point where you couldn't understand it, you know, because, again, this is only like a like a 25 minute episode, so they can only do so much. Hmm. Yeah, um, a couple of points there. Uh, the the least they could have done for Aang is take down that goddamn Fire Nation insignia, <laughs> like like in the room that he's waking up. That's what just, I I had the same like thought. Instantly yeah. freaking out. Yeah. I, I had yeah, the, yeah, so, you think so, he might be bothered yeah. by this? Oh no, it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. I had I had the same yeah. thought. The reason the thing I thought was that maybe it was because they didn't if they were bored they wanted everything to be copacetic, but they could have at least you know just but, hung it back up. But if, but if they were bored, they'd have to in there with like an arrow in his head. Their covers already long. Oh yeah, they'd move him though. But yeah, but still, it was it was funny when you they didn't even try <laughs> yeah it's like they, they they wanted that moment because in the writer's room they go ang wakes up and freaks out because he's on a fire nation vessel but in universe like take that down that doesn't need to be there you know <laughs> um but uh okay you mentioned the earth king i have always he, he i've declared in the past that he's like probably the worst character in the series <laughs> like in terms of like the writing in this series uh ironically Probably the Earth Queen and Korra maybe takes the cake, and the Earth Prince is not too good either. Mm. Um, so I have, I have an issue with Earth royalty um, apparently when it comes to the, the writing of the, these shows. But I, I always hated this character's exit. But I forgot until I watched this because I haven't seen this episode in a few years. Just how lame it was. It really because... is pathetic. Like he just completely he... abandons his duty, and not, and that would be bad enough by itself. But after the the lesson he supposedly learned from the previous book, like he was, right. he was supposed to be involved and help. You know, oh, oh, I He's need like, to well, rally I'm my just people. Take nope. my bear and go wander off, wander <laughs> off into There's... the country. You know, literally. <laughs> To kind of segue this point with also what Zuko's doing, that scene where Lo and Lee are explaining exactly what happened, it, it's very impactful. Where they're like, mm. you know, Azula and my brother yeah. did blah, 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 and the Avatar fell, and the Earth Kingdom fell. It's and such a great And it shows line. that montage of all these scene. people, like, like they're yeah. suffering, and, and they're afraid, and, like, the Earth Kingdom has been, like, like the, 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 the Fire Nation's pouring in, they're flooding through the streets, and everybody's like, oh, my God. And the Earth King's just like, bye, I'm on my bear. You know, I mean, it's like he, he's dealing with none of that. And, and I just that is so lame. I forgot just how lame it was. But um, that's probably like the bottom rung of this episode for me is like my biggest issue with it is is that. Um, and, and, and just to, just like to add your point, like I, I think I can sort of see what they're trying to do in the sense that they're really trying to sell his incompetence and just how little exposure to the rest of the world he had. But at the same time, it does come off kind of selfish and just kind of short-sighted that he would just completely abandon everything like you can still 
have those elements of him not really being in touch with what's going on, but he could still contribute in some way. I mean, yeah, yeah, in it, some way. Yeah. You I, mean, know, the, like, yeah. in, I mean, he is still last, a public figure for Pete's the, sake. He, he's know? the king, yeah. The, the yeah. last scene he had in the in book two, I think he has the final line of the season where he's like, yeah. the Earth Kingdom has fallen, and he's all like somber about it. Bye, I'm on my bear. <laughs> right, see ya. <laughs> yeah, they basically decided, ridiculous. between that and then, they basically decide, okay, we don't have the screen time to give him enough development, or we don't care about him enough, um, for whatever reason. But they, even then, they could have just said, um, you know, he's he's going to meet them up, meet up with them on the, uh, the Day of Black Sun, he's going to try and seize him in the world to prepare himself for the leadership responsibilities he's going to have to face, because clearly he hasn't got a clue what he's doing. Something like that, something hand-wavy. But no, it's just, let me just give up. Complete dereliction of duty and, and just, what yes. is the point of view? So, I'm yeah, not that really was familiar the best with the way to put it as well. Dereliction of duty, so, <laughs> you know, like that was the perfect. Thing. Yes, um, but, um, but anyway, but yeah, no, and it also kind of makes the the Earth King look like they're going to be better off with the Fire Nation as well. Even as they're storming <laughs> through the bloody, the streets and everyone's being fearful, it should, we see a lot of the characters we saw in the previous book as well. And, yes, you know, parents the pregnant couple, yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh-huh. um, the weight of um, weight of situation, everything, and, and uh, Zuko's, mm-hmm. uh, Zuko's date, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So that was cool. N- nice little detail. Touch. You definitely feel the gravity of just like how like big of a deal this really is. Yeah. And just sort of like how, how this singular invasion really is the tipping point for not only the war, but just the entire world culture. So e- again, even though it's very brief, I think they did a really good job of like just establishing just how how much of a you know impact that, th- that this really had. I mean, you literally see, you know, um, I, I don't remember what, what they're called, but like those Earth guys that like, you know, partner. The Daily. With, uh, Thank Diary, you. Yeah. you. You literally see them like, you know, destroy the big walls and yeah. for the kingdom. And that, and like that's treated with like a degree of gravity that I think it really deserves. Yeah. And just the deliveries, we kind of skimmed over a bit, but the actual announcements and, and the way that line is given, it's really cool and really dramatic. The mm-hmm. way they're kind of joint in unison saying the lines and, and the lines themselves, it's really well done. Just as a, just mm-hmm. as like a, because that will only had to be like a, a recap montage. That could have been just soccer describing what happened. And instead they kind of gave it that attention and, and, uh, and drama, like you say, it really paid off. Um, as a great, and it has that whole as well, totalitarian be rally vibe, mm. you know. Like, I exactly, mean, yeah. uh, and and I love, I love that the Fire Lord is not even in attendance for yeah. this. He's just, he, <laughs> so, oh, yeah, the like, felt. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is yeah. this is just for like the the benefit of? I mean, it's true, it did fall, it is a victory, mm. but mostly it's to remind the Fire Nation, yeah, we're better, and everybody else sucks. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not it's really a, a celebration of what his mm-hmm. kids have done. Yeah. yeah. But it's very. It just kind of shows how above it all he feels that he is. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, and it's Zuko, you know, returning home. It's his great big announcement scene as well. And he's just he's just not satisfied. I mean, we saw a bit of that uh, before, beforehand when he was arriving on the ship. Um, with the oh yeah, relationship stuff. We saw a bit of it at the end of book two. And to then, be honest, yeah. he knew it was wrong. Yeah, yeah he, immediately. He knew, yeah. And, that, and now he's finally getting everything he wants. Got got the reward that was supposed to become, you know, as a as mm-hmm. a as a salve for that 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 dissatisfaction. And he's still just oh, it, it's not enough. Like I, this isn't. I'm not happy. You know, he doesn't really know why. And we see more of that confusion moving through the episode and, of course, through the rest of the season. But right through now, the season, like, yeah. this is not what I want, you know? <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and I, I thought it was very cool. And, of course, then he got that like, paralleled right alongside Azula, who just drinks it all in. Like, yes, this is what I want. <laughs> yeah. You know, During her usual this, is, mm. this is the thing with her. Um, and Well, it, it's kind of bouncing all over the place because, um, you know, this is all, this this is kind of like, all throughout the course of the episode but she she kind of tries to for a few episodes in this se- season she tries to walk that line where she's trying to be like an a sister to him however mm-hmm. she starts it off by screwing him over um immediately so it's like that's why i can never quite be on the same trail as oh yeah i want a redemptive path for azula because she doesn't seem interested in that at all to me you know so i don't necessarily want it for her but um it's interesting the 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 fact that it does spend time these these next couple episodes um establishing that they are siblings you know like mm. and and have that kind of uh relationship uh, along with all the other weird baggage that, that yeah. comes with their, their particular it's relationship it's hard to yeah. define because she's obviously her first priority is the power dynamic both well with everybody around her at all times but especially in the political scene um but mm-hmm. just that natural streak of i'm a manipulation that's just what i do that's kind of who she is but at the same time, like you say, it's hard to define, but it is true that there is some genuine care there. She she wants to be to have a relationship with Zuka. She wants to have that mm-hmm. that, that sibling bond. It's just she's she's terrible at it and also, you know, 
everything else comes first the inflation the, the power you know so it, it's interesting how it plays out sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't like it's not in this episode but in following after this um there's like scenes where he she's trying to reach out and and, and just there's no other reason than trying to be assisted to, to zuko like yeah. warning him about iroh and stuff there are moments where it happens throughout the season yeah um, it's just it, there's usually a disconnect between that and yes. what she does particularly in this episode alone which we'll get to a bit later and um, with the whole well like i said the screwing him over um yes <laughs> But it comes off in the, in the sense that she like, even though she may, even though there might be some genuine intent there, which even that's kind of debatable, she just literally does not have the ability to connect with him in this way and vice versa, because obviously we know about their childhood and how, how different they were. So it kind of comes off as like, I don't know, like it, 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 there's some gray area in that, like, oh yeah, maybe she does care. Maybe she really doesn't. But at this point, it kind of seems to me more like. Um, she just doesn't have she just does not have the ability to connect with him on that way and vice versa yeah it's yeah, almost it's... like the intent of wanting to be a sibling is there but just her base nature who she is at her core you know, that manipulator that that controller mm -hmm. she's so inherently in selfish and manipulative yeah See, it's like i i like because because what we're kind of talking about starts off with the um the turtle deck scene yeah right where where zuko is obviously like the world's worst liar or you know what i mean like um <laughs> Which is all, well, there's no reason why uh, you have reservations about this. Are there's like, mm. and he's like, no, and looks no. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, looks not awesome. exactly nope. subtle. And, you know, and he makes an attempt to like look her in the eye and be all confident about it, and she's like. I got the lie like 30 seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? I mean, come on, what are we doing, right? Okay. And I like um, the fact then, that it is that location as well. The fact that it's it's yes. almost to the same like angle of the shot with the well, it's not a shot; it's drawing, but that's the same design there. Where his mother was, with, yeah. yeah, with the mother and, and the and the turtle ducks in the pond, and you know, just mm -hmm. just that um that setup is like a a brilliant, nice reestablishment of the area because we are coming back to the fact. Well, he is coming back to the fire nation. We're seeing it pretty much. We've had glimpses here and there, but pretty much for the first time. Um, and it's doing a good job of establishing and re-establishing all the elements of the culture and, and the space that they'd laid out beforehand um, and filling mm -hmm. in the gaps as well in between, which they, they do well for all the scenes. Um, also, like, the, the Fire Nation Palace is just one of the coolest, like, locations as well, oh, like, yeah. in the show from Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and they make so much dramatic use of it as well. It's, some of the most mm -hmm. cinematic um, moments are you making use of that space, you know, the, the shadows of the, of the throne room, the, the mm -hmm. sunsets. The, the reflection the in the everything. floor for me. The, mm. the fact that you can see the reflections in the floor, like, uh, in that throne room is great. Everything's but, uh, all very deliberate, partly because up to this point in this in this book, um, we've not had much time there, so it's been like hyper concentrated mm -hmm. scenes and, and moments uh, throughout the uh, throughout the series. So this is kind of the first time where we get to them. It starts to expand a bit more, but until now, it's just been how can I make these ten seconds of time work? How can I make this minute of time of, of a scene work for me? You know, they've really squeezed the most out of it. What do you, it what do you guys say about without really feeling overdone? Mm -hmm. You know. Well, what would you guys say to just um, sticking on this point and, and yeah, following yeah, no, the Zuko, yeah, we'll um, and then we get stuff, to the yeah. end? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's out. It chops between back and forth in the scenes, yeah. obviously. But um, but yeah, we'll stick with the uh, final scene because it's relatively compact. Most of just the for the sake episodes, of the discussion flow. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah. of the conversations we'll have around the next few episodes are the same thing. They're obviously it's Ang and Zuko or the gang mm. and Zuko separated again in their tracks. So we'll just take it into one. Um, but the next big scene with them is the is the face reveal, and it's the welcome home. Yeah, we finally see. The fire lord you know yeah and and, uh, and he's not a mangledly scarred old creepy person he actually yeah he's just a dude yeah and i was all i was almost like what was the point you know like um <laughs> like when i first saw it but it at the same time i i get it, it kind of is the point i guess is that uh he he's almost he's he's like if he wasn't a um you know a psycho he'd be perfect you know what I mean? Hmm. Great bender. He's in a position of power. Uh, probably I in the in the running for the best fire bender in the world. Um, he's uh, uh, he's not like mangled or ugly or you you, you know what I mean? It, it's like he's he's got charisma. He's um he's also he's not unintelligent. I mean he's smart. He's just uh, crazy. Um, <laughs> but um, you, you know what I mean? It's like I think it's the idea is okay. That's everything that Zuko could be aside from, but it's all the superficial stuff, mm. the stuff that that doesn't. It's like I guess that's kind of what you he sees. It's like this is really like hollow. Like this this is not who I am and not what I want to be. You know, like so, um, and I'm better than this. Like you, even as I am, you know. So that's kind of I think part of the um, point of the fact that he isn't like all mangled or or whatever. Yeah. But um, it does make me go. 
why couldn't he just look like that you know from from the start you yeah, know um, I, th I think more to be on to be honest with it it's mostly just that whole oh let's try and have it be a cool reveal that didn't really go anywhere but looking at it from yeah. the same perspective of you know being generous with it you're looking at the same perspective of it being zuko's thought process the only time we've ever seen the fire lord is through his own memories which are three mm. years old and mm. also fairly repressed so you know the idea that he's not thinking about his father he's thinking about what his father represents to him what he is how he can get you know what he can give him etc all the stuff that he's been thinking about over the last few years and in the flashbacks um this is the first time where he's having to confront his father as a as a person again face to face you know face that reality mm -hmm. etc so it could be you know the the idea of this is a zuko perspective situation um, but again, that's it's like le generous. less less like of a of a nebulous just de nebulous like void of power and more just as his actual father and as yeah. a person with actual structure and whatnot. So yeah, like mm. that, that that could you know be, what? You know? And the other thing is like he doesn't. Um, I think there's even scenes where Azula will put like her hand on like Zuko's shoulder or or something of that nature. I don't think he ever touches Zuko. Not even when he hurt him, he bent at him. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like in the entire run of the show i don't think you ever see them have physical contact of any kind um and, I mean, that's, and that's another that's, good thing that's like about pretty, the scene um, yeah the following up scene i was about to say the same thing with the circling you know it's, it's always yes. predatory he's, he's, he's like he's, a cobra he's, yeah, he's exactly. snake like yeah exactly he's yeah. got that element of predatory like power in in place he's mm -hmm. not touching he's not being affectionate he's just prowling and stating here is why our relationship is this current situation this is the new dynamic and here you know here's why here's why reinforcing that 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 grip in, he has over him at least in his own mind um and delivering that hammer blow of course that azula has lied and said uh, azula always lies um said about uh about the fact that zuko was the one who brought down the avatar because she picked up the lie earlier um quite obviously from zuko i i, th I think it's, it plays really well um i didn't note the reflections in that particular scene because it may have been the shadows but were there the reflections on the floor for that as well as he circled i don't know about the entire scene but certainly when zuko kneels before him the first mm. time you can see the reflections um i think you would you'd it, it could they could be obscured i didn't yeah, know, I couldn't, um, I couldn't make a note of that, that one scene. But yeah yeah it's, it's a beautiful scene though you're just seeing zuko mm. having to sit and, and be talked at by this person who all this time he's been declaring that he wants to you know the appreciation and, and respect from and then even now it's again in that that depth of dissatisfaction he's just sitting there going, i this what am i doing <laughs> you know why am i here why am i not happy what he's just thoroughly confused by it all I and mean, it's very effective mm -hmm. it shows like how his perspective has just changed so drastically over the last few you know over these last few seasons in the sense that like you're saying, like this is if this was like season one Zuko, this would be very much what he would want to become. But since he's had those experiences, you see, you you sort of see the the conflict in him, which is obviously the whole point. Mm. And yeah, he's, and he's just starting to recognize it. Obviously, he was aware of the mm -hmm. change and the shift. You saw that at the end of book two, and that was kind of the point of the end of book two, establishing that in the lead up mm -hmm. to the climax. But um, but yeah, now he's like, oh, is it further than I thought it was? You know, how much have I changed? Mm -hmm. And it's very cool. Um. And yeah, the major scene out for the final scene after that is, is one of my favorite scenes in the episode. In fact, the favorite scene in the episode um, with uh, him confronting Azula about the lie. Okay. Now, um, this this is uh, uh, the best thing about this for me is the fact that he opens the door and leaves it open after he leaves. <laughs> that is such a... <laughs> and she... And she, because uh, that's such a sibling, I would totally do that to my sister. And she, I, I love that she just goes back to sleep and she's like pretending like the light in the door doesn't bother her. She's waiting for him to get to the other end of the palace, to his room, before she gets up and slams the door. Because you know she's not having that. But she didn't want to show it, like in front of him. She, you know that's bothering her. But um, yeah, I think it's also the only time you see her without makeup on. And I kind of like this. Um, yes, yeah. The design hair for down, her better. The sh not yeah. disheveled, obviously. It's Zula. But, um, mm -hmm. but still more casual um, in design, even down to the robe and stuff. It, it, it's very cool. It's mm -hmm. nice seeing her, how she's still just as much as Zula in her, out of her element when, she, uh, and when she's got her guard down so than when she mm -hmm. has it up. It's very cool. And a bit more of a sibling mm -hmm. situation as well. It's, not, it's the first mm -hmm. time we've seen them in their home, home together that wasn't in a flashback, you know. So it's, uh, it's very cool. She still comes yeah. off as like being regal, but at the same time, still being able to have that presence that she's always had up till this point. Hmm. And also, we're starting to see more of her just as just as a young girl as well. Like she's not in her like princess mode. She's just a young girl in her room. Obviously, it's a it's a pretty hefty chamber. But with that aside, <laughs> it's you know it's just two siblings. This is the first time you're seeing them without their roles in play, or at least either an objective well, mission yeah. or anything like that. Until. Until we get to the eclipse, she's not really on mission anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, she's just kind of living where she, in her house. You know? Yeah, exactly. And we start to see more of that 
that kind of come into the uh, into the the dynamic between the two, which I enjoy. We're leading up mm. all, all the way up to the beach, obviously, which is uh, where you fully mm. see that in in stark display and, and to the great benefits. So, yeah, it's nice getting that early on and having it run through the rest of the book. Um, but that leads with the that finishes off the Fire Nation side of things. We then return to the gang, which is mostly, um, with the exception of the runaway Ang, um, just the general adventure shenanigans on the ship. So they they get encountered by a Fire Nation but, um, ship that asks why why they're heading there. I like that the the detail of the the admiral not immediately himself going, <laughs> not immediately going. Wait, that was a that was a trick, and you got it wrong. I like the fact that he genuinely accepted the answer and then then was corrected by his, his underling saying that that they should you know. Um, that it wasn't the case with the admiral being the different yeah. place. I like that it, it it's a very small guys, touch, but it gives that did you little notice, bit. Oh, sorry. Oh, that you were going to say the believability of uh, saw yeah. the realism of the moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't mean to cut you off. That's right. I was just going to say, did you notice Mark Hamill pulling double duty? He yes. was the that guy's voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has such a distinctive it? voice. <laughs> he should not voice more than one character in a thing. I can Indeed. always pick him out. Yeah, and there's that. Why does that um, ever tell me anything? <laughs> I yeah, love the, but, yeah. but, but then he's the one saying, "Okay, they should have known that something's wrong." I think this is so. You know, yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's a good. It's it's a two person like competence to yeah. this situation, which is a small touch, but it really does add believability to. The and the only reason it's caught is because of Toph. You know, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's all it all. Um, everyone's at work and they're put they're putting the time. In. I also appreciate the details. Again, small things of the fact that they know where the ship is. It was it was indicated at the start of the episode where the ship is in the world, and the world reacts around them as a result. The, mm-hmm. the ships are heading to Barsing Say, going specifically through this route, which we knew from earlier on. That's something they do. It's near the Serpent's Pass because um, obviously they just passed it. Hence the Serpent's Pass. Serpent is there. You know, these aren't. They're actually paying attention to where in the world they are and how how it should be responding to their presence. Yeah. It sells that bit of luck because that was definitely like, how do we get them out of this situation? Yeah, exactly. Well, have the have the Unagi <laughs> show up. Yeah, yeah. And obviously mm. all the jokes and everything that's just as just classic Avatar. With you know, why does the universe always want to prove me wrong? You make it. You too make easy. it too easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's got classic he is. Like yeah, he's the whipping boy for these next couple of episodes. Uh, yeah. Saka's in in rare form for a little while up until probably up until uh, um, what is it? Uh, uh, Sokka's master, which yes, we, we won't be yeah. discussing um, that for a little while, but that's uh, a great episode. Yeah, but at the same but, time, um, he's also on mission. You know, he's actually the one trying <clears> to steer them in the right direction. You know, we've got a schedule, we've got to get yeah. there on time. Well, it's, it's obviously played through humor. Scroll. Yeah, <laughs> which, by it. the way, uh, that's another episode. But yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. It's we'll an Excel that. spreadsheet. I never noticed that before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, uh, but the, the biggest thing here is uh, 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 Ang's. Um, you know, you know uh, internal sort of conflict of and mm. yes and also Katara's issues with her dad um yeah. so the, those are the the big things now this is uh, also the first moment where Aang actually meets a Katara and Sokka's father yes and they have that, yeah. they have that. I mean it's yeah. a subtle thing but it like it does establish because like these two have not interacted at all since before this well, they, so. they don't really interact again and, and like right. I'm not really uh, from my memory but but also this meeting is pretty perfunctory because of uh Katara's uh attitude um mm. and I've always had issues with with her in this episode and I've never been able to pinpoint exactly why I think I finally figured it out um can we talk about her and then just yeah, do yeah, Yang stuff last? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, cool. Okay. So, so I've always in in my mind, I was never quite, I never quite jived with this conflict that she has. But it's not because of the moment. It's not because of any singular scene. It's not because of the logic. It all makes sense and it all flows and it all. It, it's the fact, I think, is that and and this is kind of a, a, a just a trouble of um uh the fact that this is like a twenty three minute episode or whatever it is. And it's a season opener. And we've got so much other stuff to establish. There is enough there for it to be its own episode. And they're mm-hmm. condensing it into this thing. And and, and, and and they do a good job for the most part. But what it feels like and the part that I can't ignore, they've been with the dad for a while. And it feels like they've waited for Aang to wake up so that she can have this. Um, in, you know what I mean? For that yeah. to be like the trigger point, even though it's clearly been going on. Um, and it just feels like we're saving it for the audience to watch it because the dad is completely bi- blindsided by all of it when she starts in with him. And then she's aware of the problem herself and she voices exactly what the problem is. And and that all works. It just feels so condensed. And mm. like I said, a little like you can see the writer's hand, like we got to get this on camera so it can't happen before. And um, it just feels a little convenient. But and, and that's the that's the reason why it's always kind of 
felt like we need to give Katara something to do in this episode, as opposed to something that could have really felt very natural and and earned um, to me in another medium, like a book. You know what I mean? Um, mm. Or or just a, a two parter or something. So it's not a it's not a thing I hate. It's not a thing that I think that they should just take it out. I, I just for me, uh, my my brain wants to go in and tweak it and, and yeah. make it better than it already is, you know? Yeah, well, the scene um, itself is that is actually like pretty pretty good and how yes. it's presented singularly. But yeah, it the culmination scene where where like yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it definitely feels like it was like something that was like tacked on, and you get the feeling that they probably had this idea in the back of their heads like for a while, but they just didn't mm. know when to put it in. And even then, like this the scene is relatively short, but at the same time, I mean. I mean, I, I do like that they're able to be as open with each other as they were, like, right off the bat, because obviously they have that close relationship. But again, like, you do definitely feel like a lot more could have been said in that moment, and it's just not really touched on since then, so yeah. that's kind of a shame. Yeah, it, and it does at the very least. Sorry, just to wrap up, and then yeah. I'll let you kick, kick in, Kelly. It, it does at the very least um, uh, set the stage for what her baggage is throughout the season. Mm -hmm. um, she's very motivated by what happened Um to her tribe, her people, her mother, and the fact that, like, the dad is kind of like a, a living reminder of it, and also, you know what I mean? Mm. And it is a commentary on just the nature of, of war and what it puts families through, because it's mm. not his fault, and she knows it's not his fault, mm -hmm. and yet all he can do is, is apologize, and it's, you know, it, it is what it is. But anyway, what were you going to say, Yeah, Kyle? well, that, that and the fact that she's, uh, you see in her own kind of more centered episodes, or central episodes, that she's, even before leading up to the final um, finale of it with, uh, with the, um, uh, Darth Katara episode. Um, mm. She she Darth is also Katara, herself yes. trying to be um, the nurturing mother figure that hasn't gone away. You know, the one she's she's trying to step in and help people throughout the series. She's trying to be that that um, mother figure for the gang, um, and we'll see that in later episodes. You know, she's she's trying to be that that presence that she's always wanted um, from both her parents. Um, neither of whom you know could avoid having uh, having not been that for them in the in the mm. circumstances um but the, yeah i, I completely i knew you can have an issue with one because we, i remember you mentioning it in one of the previous um previous book um my attitude is softened on it after i figured out what it was that bothered yeah. me about it and, you know? and i completely agree with all everything you've said like it, it's effective scene by scene with the possible exception of the start where it's a bit stark you know it, because yeah that, that, that is like out of yeah. nowhere like to yeah. all the you, characters you can, involved almost you, you yeah. can see that he's kind of aware of it's something that has happened have been happening throughout the previous time but it's just because we haven't seen Katara since now and the first time we're seeing her is this weird thing that she's never really displayed before it's, it's a bit it's a bit shocking but the rest yeah. the rest of the scene do play by well by themselves especially the last one very effectively in isolation yeah but like you say this is a story that should have had more breathing room um it, it should it would have been far more effective um it is effective by itself but far more effective if it had a few more episodes of padding to kind of uh yeah. give you know a little bit more details on each individual scene like you say and it's just it's just a sh it's a shame it's a missed opportunity especially you know failure, why you know because this is the season where they could have done that there's mm. a couple episodes they did not need to make you know what i yes, mean like yeah. um, and, where and there's, it, and there's that, a lot of situations where they have overlap with the father as well it's not like he's yes. a perpetually distant figure that there's enough um yeah start middle end for him in, in this book where that could have been well done uh, especially yeah. if she's learning the lesson as she goes for a journey because I, I like that she and i know you mentioned it as well i like the fact that she doesn't need to learn she knows it's not yes. but ultimately it's just this emotional struggle rather than this intellectual mm -hmm. one you know she she gets yeah. it it's just that doesn't stop the hurt and that's a very human reaction yes it's very she doesn't intense. struggle with the concept it's yeah just, it's just the fact that the reality of it is still so impactful like she gets that he had to do what he had to do and the fact that he is doing what he's doing in order to better the world but at the same time it's like yeah you know you did still leave us you know yeah it's it's that horrible tragedy and, and i like the fact that it is connected obviously it's it's heavy in the writer's hands it's yes but, to but, the end but, but it is yeah. connected to the end thing you've got to give it credit for yes. that it's not subtle because it's a 20 minute episode it's not, you've got yeah. to cram a lot yeah. in <laughs> But yeah. at the same time, it is there, you know. So that it's it's, it's a it's good idea. It's it, it, that, that's a, it's a great idea. Yeah. It's just the execution is not subtle at all. Yeah. yeah um, but uh, yeah. So Aang, speaking he's, of, he's yeah, speaking of cramming, off, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's he's flying off, um, and, and and is mostly in distress because he's reliving an old wound. You know, this is him mm -hmm. abandoning the world all over again in his eyes. You know, he has failed. This is this is everyone thinking he's dead. This is this is all of his worst nightmares. What he was supposed to be not doing from the previous books and from everything he's tried to up to this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it really sets him off. Yeah, is but I feel like I honestly most... feel like we've done this before, you know. That's, that's <laughs> we have done it. Like, it doesn't, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like it, it doesn't. I'm not saying like that like breaks the episode or anything, but I just feel like you know, I get like in the context, considering he did just fail massively and they did just have this defeat, he would be feeling this way. But at the same time, the fact that he's just so he's like immediately so committed to to abandoning everybody just comes off as like a little like really. It, 
it makes me it, it makes me I, I'm sold on the moment because it makes me think of like a kid who just like lost like a, like a sports match, you know, like publicly <laughs> and wants to get right back in there and prove himself. You know what I mean? Like uh, and at the same time, he is the only one with this responsibility and this duty. And in his mind, he because he doesn't know Roku's story yet, which we get in this season, he probably thinks of himself as like the only avatar to have failed at something. You know what I mean? Um uh, so, so that, uh, it, I, I'm sold on all that, but can we just talk, is this the most Ben Kenobi like scene ever? Like this oh, is God. like straight <laughs> out of Hoth, like planet Hoth. You, you, you know, like, yeah. He Roku, gets two spirits like, though. <laughs> yeah. I know. Roku literally shows up like Ben on Hoth as he's like, you know, yeah, he's like drowning. He's like, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, it just, it just struck me as like, whoa, like, I, I don't remember this we'll scene being, and, and I could, and yeah, in two spirit, <laughs> yeah, you, you mentioned two spirits. I completely forgot that UA is in this episode. Mm. I, I, um, I, before I, I rewatch this, I hadn't forgotten that she was in it, but I did forget that she actually water bends as well. You see her physically water, yeah. which is a small thing, but it's a huge tidal wave that she summons, which is cool because, you know, well, she's, she's the moon, the she, origin she's of the water bending. She's so. the water bender now. Yeah, she's the original, it. she's like the source of all water bending. It's yeah. brilliant. It's, it's just that little touch that I like. So she kind of sent her away and sent. Ang to um, uh, I like Island, the idea that in not Crescent Island, it's huh? the well, what's the name of the island? I always forget it. Uh, it oh. is a Crescent Moon, but I don't think that's the name of it. Roku's Island. Probably, well, it, okay, so is is it not? Is it Roku's old home or is it his temple? Because I've always thought that those were two it different could places. Be both. If it's not okay. the same place I, anymore, I don't uh, know. Which one. We should know this, but yeah, it's it's one of the two. It's it's a point okay. island I, of failure. I, I like the idea that the, <laughs> I like the t- the idea that Roku and Yue are like like after Aang does his thing, they're like he's not gonna make it. Give him a push. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? And also, you know, and, and if it is yeah. related to Roku, I like the fact that that's the connection for why he's able to materialize here as well, because it does get a little sure. bit faster oh, yeah. loose with the whole once you've done. The oh yeah, big, no, okay. Big, Avatar yeah. and the Fire Lord. He just is like, yeah, Aang, I know. Time for backstory. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but he I thought you like, no, it's clips. like you know, it, it, it was all my fault, you know, because of this yeah. happened. I should have done better. It's like okay, yeah, I don't I, think there's any like. Maybe you should have told them that beforehand. I don't think there's um, any solstice or any like yeah. weird location that they're. I think he just shows up and it's like it's, it's time it's for me to tell you something. Yeah, it's because he's yeah. entering the Avatar state for the first time, though. Is the, is the idea, but it's, but still, it does play a bit faster. Is it? with the whole significance of needing an untrained Avatar, a um, big moment to get an untrained Avatar? No, no, no. Avatar you're talking about no, no. That's Avatar state, right? Like that's the. But I'm yeah. talking Avatar and the Fire Lord, like when he gives the Sozin backstory oh, yes, he literally yeah. just like pops up and is like here it's time for me to give you a backstory you know what i mean yeah but, um i don't have a problem with the avatar state that's that's fine yeah yeah um but you're right um, it, does, it does get a bit, bit less uh eclipse <clears throat> requirement of a or big spiritual moment requirement for that but yeah it's funny um but yeah so he gets that push he gets that nudge it's that kind of spiritual um pat on the back effectively saying no you're not the only one who's failed and I, also i like the fact that Ang has that perspective because he is a kid you know this is the great master this is the person i hear stories about and always have done um especially back when he was you know, you know a child that being raised in the world where roku had just died um he's heard all these great stories so from a child's perspective adults don't don't get it wrong a lot of the time you know um it, it, especially mm. the ones you've, you've been t- t- trained to respect so I, I like that and it works well um but yeah, the gang, the gang find him. They make the choice. Yeah, so that's kind of this show. episode. And they they have him, the, you know, the reconnection and the burning, yeah. the burning I, of the staff. I love the that, sim- yeah. symbology of that. Literally planting mm. his flag, um, the this relic of his of, uh, of who he is in this 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 mound. It's it, also the question of symbolism as, as he walks away, it burns up and turns to ash as well. Um, but mm-hmm. but that also that acceptance of being willing to accept that stealth um, plan now. The thing that stu- stands it's one, out. It's to one me. of those like really like hey, we're in the end game sort of. Yeah, exactly. All I could. All I could focus on was the soles on Aang's feet because he was standing on some some magma. I'm pretty yes. sure. <laughs> like when he did that, I was like, uh. <laughs> Just like, I mean, that is some that's some true monk training, you know, like right right there. So he's yeah. he's been through some stuff there. But uh, anyway, um, but, but that's yeah. The episode, so that is yeah. that's, yeah. The, that's awakening. the awakening. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a solid episode. It's obviously very truncated. It could have done with being, uh, I think, possibly a two parter would have benefited from this one if they put more effort into kind of properly yeah. developing each mm-hmm. of the ideas. Um, but for what it is, it works. We get caught up. We get a nice snapshot, a very dramatic snapshot of what happened at the end of book three post um, finale, and uh, and you know it gets everybody on the right trajectory for the next uh, next episodes. So um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but it's never going to be considered one of the best. Right. Yeah, I mean, I it's a good it's a good there. season opener, but it just it, it it only just does exactly what it needs to do, and no more than that. I mean, again, yeah. like you said, nothing. There's nothing like really terrible, but again, there's nothing really mind blowing either. It just is again, it's just all set up for what's to come. Mm. 
I agree. It was nowhere near my favorites, but it's solid, except for the Earth mm-hmm. Kingdom thing or Earth King thing. That <laughs> yeah, sucked. That's, but, yeah. Um, like, yeah, that's just classic <laughs> stupid. But, you know. um, they just have a thing against monarchies, yeah. I think, and it's the creators of the show. <laughs> and I'm and I'm very much looking forward to our next episode, the headband, mm-hmm. because um, that's one of my probably going to be one of my favorite episodes of the season. I think mm, very, quite a bit to talk about with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, uh, Evan, signing off. <laughs> well, uh, Evan over ninety five. We hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys later. Uh, it's been so long since I was asked to do one of these things I forgot all about sign-offs but uh, thanks for watching and have a good one (laughs) and I still have an outro goodbye